Hi, this is Jeffrey Fox, and I'm describing a very broad overview of cloud technology uh, as it applies to X Informatics or the actual application oriented version of data processing as part of the big data and X Informatics MOOC. We remember our rallying point because it tells you why we're doing clouds. Uh, we're doing clouds because we run on the clouds. Our data analytics, which is our clustering, our recommender system, our physics analysis code to find histograms and so on. We uh, process this big data from these different areas, whether it be from Amazon or Large Hadron Collider or Netflix, and we uh, maybe from Google crawled from the web, and those are the problems in X informatics that we're solving. And here, of course, we have our collage of informatics fields across across disciplines uh, as trolled from the web. And now we have a little discussion, a very short discussion of cyber infrastructure, which is just what we know already in a slightly different language with a more precise focus. And we're discussing, as we'll see, more or less anything informatics, which is, of course, X informatics. Because by definition, X can be substituted for more or less anything. And so that's EX or E more or less anything. So cyber infrastructure is uh, from the National Science Foundation. And it's the infrastructure that supports distributed research and learning, which is research informatics, education informatics, or science informatics, or as it says here, e-science, e-research, or e-education. As we've always emphasized, it links data, people, and computers together. And it uh, uses a mix of internet and grid, including clouds, grids, uh, and worries about security, and it uses supercomputers in an important fashion. It sort of has three aspects, which we'll come and discuss uh, in the future. And we already mentioned in our introduction. Namely, it has parallel computers, which are very low latency, uh, aimed at the large scale simulations using a lot of cores slash nodes on the same job. And it has distributed, where the latency can even mention reach milliseconds between sites, because they're distributed. And those are you know, sometimes inevitable, because data, as I mentioned, is always distributed. And then we have clouds with uh, properties that are somewhat in between, our very best supercomputers and our distributed heterogeneous collection of things. The parallel is needed to get high performance on individual large simulations. And um, you know, whether you use, a, one always in fact uses parallel. And uh, what counts is the um, actual performance of the communication network which is more stringent for simulation and for data analysis. And as on the last one, it says data, as in biology, uh, gene sequences are often distributed, and uh, sensors are even more so. So we need to integrate distributed data, whether we access them in distributed fashion or first stick them in the repository, is something that's still being debated by the community. If we look at E more or less anything, we go. Uh, we can uh, go back to the original definition of e-science, which was uh, maybe 15 years ago, where John Taylor, who at that time was Director General of Research Councils in the United Kingdom, he defined e-science as global collaboration in key areas of science and the infrastructure that will enable it. Now, we remembered from the Large Hadron Collider example for X informatics, namely physics informatics. The large experiments at the, at, uh, the CERN accelerator involved uh, 3,000 people and 200 institutions, and those uh, are scattered across the globe. And so science always involves collaboration because you're pursuing a single goal. There is only one Higgs boson, there is not a boson for every country, and so you have to collaborate to make discoveries. And so we can call these science, science informatics, as far as I can see. And that's developing tools and technologies that allow scientists to do faster, better, or different research. And they need to do it globally. 
and it's equivalent, and it's a quite analogous to e-business or business informatics, and that, of course, is is the whole focus of this uh, of this uh, course, which is discovery, which is a lot of the things we're discussing, such as lifestyle or e-commerce informatics, are basically parts of e-business, and. We need to also support corporations. Those are all corporations are also global today, and uh, we need to support that uh, activity across the world. And we can generalize this, as we've stressed many times in this class. The e more or less anything, or more or less anything informatics or ex informatics. And in the case of um, science, we can certainly. Do Consider digital libraries or e social science or e lifestyle. That's what we call the e commerce discussion of the recommender systems we discussed. And of course, e education, which is sort of MOOCs. And we have this deluge of data, which we've already documented. And the people and the computers and the data must be linked together to realize our goals, which is better science in this case.